Hi crypto devs, Liarco here. In today's video, I want to talk about batch minting. So minting multiple tokens at once. This is something that you asked uh, in a lot of comments and messages. So let's get into it. First of all, let's see how to implement it. It's pretty easy and I'm gonna give you a couple of options for that, but stick till the end because I'm also gonna talk about why, in my opinion, you should probably think twice before minting a lot of tokens at once, so in a single transaction. Okay, so we are in Visual Studio Code. This is the contract from the Ashlips Lab project for ERC721 collections. And um, as you can see here, we already have a function that allows us to mint for a specific address and we can also specify an amount. Before we get into this, I wanna show you another option that you might uh, like. And a lot of collections like to do this, batch minting for the team at deployment. Of course, you can always use the constructor for that. In this example here, I'm gonna create a comment here. So batch mint for team. And here we can simply use the safe mint function and we have to specify an address. Whatever you like, it's fine. And uh, the quantity can be whatever number you like. In this case, we are sending 20 tokens to this address as soon as we deploy the contract. This will happen immediately, okay? So this is the first option, it works pretty well and as long as you're not doing some strange things like uh, minting thousands of tokens at once, it should work with no problem on OpenSea as well. Now let's get to the mint for address function because as I said, in this case, this function already gives you the option to mint a specific amount of tokens and send them for free to a specific address. Of course, you're gonna pay gas for that, but you're not paying the token price. Okay, so the reason why I think that we might want to amend this function just a bit is that as you can see here, the function has a modifier, which is mint compliance, and the mint amount is passed as a parameter here. I decided to do this because by doing that, I'm making so that the owner won't be able to mint a huge amount of tokens for free out of the blue, okay? So if you take a look at what happens inside the modifier, the first thing that is checked is that the mint amount is not higher than the max mint amount per TX. This can act as a safeguard in case you're maybe typing a digit more than you wanted by mistake. But if you are considering the batch minting probably you would like to mint uh, 100 tokens or more at the same time, so this can be pretty annoying. So let's see how we can change the function so there will be no limit for the owner. So I'm gonna copy that, so we will have the original one as a reference. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna take away the mint compliance modifier. Please pay attention not to remove the only owner because this will ensure that nobody but the owner will be able to run the function. And I'm also gonna change the name to batch mint, okay? The parameters are fine, so uh, the mint amount and the receiver are absolutely fine. The body of the function, the instructions there are fine as well. And what we want to take from the mint compliance modifier is this second requirement here. And the reason why I really want this to be there is because you never want your collection to be messed up because you uh, just entered a value which is too high and you minted above the total supply. So this requirement here will check that everything is compliant with your collection and at the same time you won't be limited by the max mint amount per TX which is the same limit that the users have. So these are a couple of ways in which you can implement the batch minting. So either in the constructor or with a custom function that you can run whenever you want. But now let's get to the reasons why you should absolutely think twice before actually using it. Especially if you plan to mint a huge amount of tokens at once. So since I released this project, I received the complaints from a lot of people that were trying to mint thousands of tokens on Polygon and uh, those tokens were not appearing on OpenSea. 
The reason why this happens is probably because I couldn't find any official documentation about that, but it seems like uh, OpenSea is using some sort of anti-spam mechanism in order to find out collections that are sending a huge amount of tokens at once to specific wallets. So you probably know that a lot of collections are sending advertisement NFTs to wallets so people will see the NFTs in wallets from other people and then they might get to main the target collection. This is pretty bad and OpenSea had to do something about it. So they decided to filter some NFTs, especially when they are minted too fast. So if your plan is maybe to mint a thousand or, or even 10,000 tokens on a cheap network like Polygon, I can probably guarantee you that 90% of the times you won't see your tokens in the OpenSea profile. They will be in your wallet because the blockchain is gonna show them correctly, but marketplaces might decide to ignore them because as I said, they detect them as spam. Another reason why minting a lot of tokens at once might not be a good idea is because then you would end up having a huge amount of tokens in your wallet and you will have to list them on the marketplaces. So even if you're just using OpenSea, Having to list 10,000 tokens manually is really a pain. So I would never recommend doing it that way. And to be honest, uh, you are also taking away the mint experience from the users. So this is also something that I, as a hand user, would probably not like too much. Okay, that's all for this video. And whatever you would like to add to your contract as a feature or a workflow, that's fine. But please take care of your end users because in the end of the day, they are the only ones that you should care about. And if there's anything that you would like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. For now, thank you for watching and bye.